Let's talk about UVs, and more importantly, how to get the cleanest, most excellent UVs that are sure to make your life a hell of a lot easier in texturing, or at least not embarrass yourself in front of the texture artist that might be painting your model. So first, what are UVs? Not the solar kind, but the CG kind. They define the 2D coordinate system for projecting textures onto a 3D model. It makes sense if you've done this before, but maybe not to your painfully CG unaware friends and family. Simply put, it's like how the world map is a 2D representation of the globe. You wrap the world map image or texture around a sphere and it becomes a globe. Or how a candy wrapper flattened out is a flat 2D square with the package design on it. And when we wrap it around our candy, it's now a 3D object with color. Or even like how a flat box is a 2D representation of a 3D box. And a package designer will design the box in 2D on the flat box, which then gets printed and assembled and becomes a 3D box. To which my parents would then ask, okay, so that's how you do the drawing in the computer. So yes, mom, that's how I do the drawing in the computer. So let's move on to making godlike UVs that won't get embarrassingly kicked back by texture artists so that you won't have to see them again. Decide on the resolution. Define how close up you expect to see your asset. Ask yourself questions like how many pixels on the screen you expect your asset to take up. That way you can quickly identify how much space your UV tiles should take up, how large your texture resolution should be, and potentially how many UDIMs or UV tiles you intend on using. Prepare your asset. Oftentimes, you'll want to work on your UVs before you complete your model. It's a good idea to work out some of the UVs as you're modeling. For instance, you'll want to UV objects that are going to be duplicated before you start duplicating them. That way, you won't have to worry about their UVs later on. You'll probably also want to UV your asset when its shape is more or less locked in, but its resolution still isn't too high, as it becomes much more difficult to UV if the poly count is too high. But make sure that your object has enough supporting edges so that you don't get any dirty UV stretching when it's subdivided. Make sure to freeze transforms and delete history before you start UVing an object, as that can also result in a lot of UV funkiness. Select your asset and start with a camera projected UV. Make smart cuts. The less seams you have, the better. So don't overcut, but seams are unavoidable. So try to identify areas where you might be able to hide them. Hiding seams on edges that won't be seen by camera or where there are obvious plane changes are generally good ideas. Avoid making cuts in areas where too many edges connect as that can also cause distortion in your UVs. Working your UVs. Keep unfolding and optimizing all or parts of your UV shells until your UVs are as evenly distributed and straight as possible. You'll sometimes want to isolate parts of your UVs, unfold and optimize them separately, or straighten certain edges, and even manually move some UV points around on the rarest of occasions. The goal is to keep all the squares in the UV shell texture as smooth and undistorted as possible. For any shell strip that has a long rectangular or arced shape, I'll almost always make sure to straighten the entire UV shell and make sure that the UVs are as straight and rectangular as possible. This keeps the UV shell nice and clean and has the added advantage of making it very easy to project text or paint straight lines across the UVs. Uniform Texel Density Be mindful of your texel density. That's to say the relationship of the scale of your UVs between all of your UV shells. As a general rule, you want all of your shells to have the same texel density so that the texture resolution is the same throughout your entire asset. It's especially important for procedural UV-based textures, as you'll obviously notice that noise in one area of your asset is far larger than the rest. In Maya, it's as easy as selecting the shell you want as your source for the texel density, getting that texel density, and then setting it to all the other selected shells. It's sometimes okay for some unevenness in your UV texel density. If you know for sure that part of an asset will barely be seen on screen and only needs some vague color information, you can make those areas smaller in favor of getting more in your other shells without compromising to fit every shell at that same resolution. Lay out those UVs and stack them upright. When laying out UVs, obviously make sure that your shells don't overlap and that they don't cross the borders of the UV tiles, but also make sure that your UVs are upright. That's generally why UV grid textures with numbers and letters on them are used. You want to make sure that the characters are facing upwards. That ensures that position-based and gradient textures will work effectively on your object, and generally make a lot more intuitive sense to you when you're painting. Lay out your UVs in a clean and organized manner, meaning that your UVs are upright, grouped together nicely, and make the most out of the space in each UV tile. I generally prefer to group my UV shells by material, as that makes it easier to paint materials together and apply apply masks to certain areas of the asset. I'd say it's like playing Tetris, but I don't want you to start rotating your shells around to make them fit. This has been my method for laying out UVs for a good while now, and it's worked effectively for me. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let us know after you've subscribed, of course.